Hi everyone, my name is Sydney Burns and today I'm going to be discussing a study that I conducted last semester on the negative effects of hookup culture on self-esteem. Alright, so first I want to go over what a hookup is and what hookup culture is. So there is some debate about what actually constitutes a hookup, but generally speaking we're going to be talking about sexual encounters and this can range from kissing to oral sex to sexual intercourse that only exists for the fulfillment of a sexual need, so there's no expectation or label of commitment from anyone involved in a hookup. And hookup culture is a cultural phenomenon in which frequent casual sex is socially rewarded, and you'll see this mostly in young adult and college student populations. So what brought me to this research idea was I was thinking about the arguments for and against hookup culture. And the arguments in favor of hookup culture mostly started during the sexual revolution of the 1960s in which we saw this increased acceptance for non-traditional or alternative sexual lifestyles and behaviors. So things like marital sex, non-heterosexual relationships, reproductive rights, contraception, pornography, and of course, casual sex. And the argument was that by removing the stigma that surrounds promiscuity and non-committal relationships, or really just non-traditional relationships, people could feel more sexually liberated and having as many sexual partners as they desired. And then I started thinking about the counter arguments to hookup culture that included concerns about an increased spread of STDs, an increased number of instances of uh, sexual assault because of the involvement of alcohol in hookups. But in my research, I was mostly interested in looking at how hookup culture makes people feel about themselves and how popular they perceive hookup culture to be. And through doing this, I had hoped to gain some insight about whether or not hookup culture is serving as a benefit to young adults. So in my research, I was looking at any kind of negative effects I could find from hookup culture on self-esteem in males and females. And particularly, I wanted to see any discrepancies between the two. And I was also interested in looking at how young adults would estimate the hookup permissibility of their peers. So there were four points that I found in my background research of this subject that really informed my hypotheses. And the first was a difference in relationship goals between males and females. So females tend to pursue committed relationships, whereas males tend to pursue casual relationships. And also, females tend to go into hookup relationships hoping that they'll come out of it with a committed relationship, whereas males don't really do this as often. There's also an increased fear of vulnerability in women than in males when it comes to communication in these relationships. So women tend to be more afraid to communicate feelings of attachment and express vulnerability of their feelings in these kinds of relationships out of fear of being labeled crazy, needy, or emotionally unstable. And finally, college students overall tend to overestimate the casual sex permissibility of their peers. So those four points led me to expect to see a significant discrepancy in self-esteem between males and females as it relates to hookups, particularly with females indicating a much lower self-esteem than males. And I also expected that most of my participants would estimate that either most college students or most of their peers in their immediate social circles either have or are currently hooking up. And so on the right, you can see the questions that I asked in my survey. And these questions were really designed to capture the negative effects that one might experience as a result of hooking up. And they are intended to capture emotions like regret, shame, depression, body image insecurity, um, and things like that. So I derived some of these questions from the NIHI scale, the Negative Impacts of Hookups Inventory scale that was developed by Dr. Lucy Knapper and her colleagues in 2016. And I recruited my participants through social media, so namely it was Twitter, Instagram, and a large academic Slack group. So each of my 11 questions prompted a yes or no response from the participant, and they were also asked some additional questions about the way that they perceive the casual sex permissibility of their peers and of college students overall. And I used this information to calculate an overall self-esteem score for each participant. So if a participant responded in a way that indicated a low self-esteem, one point would be added to their score. And if they did not respond in a way that indicated a low self-esteem, zero points would be added. And so in this case, a higher score corresponds with a lower self-esteem. And using an independent samples t-test, I found that the mean score for stud the mean score for males in my study rather was 2 and the mean score for females was about 4.4 with a p-value of less than 0.26. And I found that 83% of my participants believe that most college students have hooked up before and roughly 77% believe that most of the people in their immediate social circles either have or are currently hooking up. 
So I did confirm a self-esteem discrepancy between males and females with my study, particularly with females reporting a much lower self-esteem than males in my study as it relates to hooking up. And I also confirmed that there was a sexual permissibility overestimation in my participants, with most of them, most of whom were college age, believing that most college students or most of their peers either are or, or either are or have hooked up before. And so what I take away from this is that it seems that women tend to experience the negative consequences of hookup culture more disproportionately to men, at least as it relates to self-esteem, with the females in my study indicating more feelings of shame, depression, body image insecurity, and feeling more wary of sexual encounters overall as a result of being involved in hookups. And now on to the most exciting part of my research, in my opinion, the implications and practical applications of it. So one thing I noticed right away in evaluating my results was that most of the people in my study are overestimating the sexual permissibility of their peers and of college students, meaning that they agree, mostly, that hookup culture is popular. But also, the females in my study particularly indicated feeling negatively affected by hookup culture in a way that lowers their self-worth, at least how they perceive their self-worth. And this is concerning to me because it suggests that there's something wrong with the culture if the people involved aren't happy with it, but they all agree that it's popular. So if there's evidence that suggests that hookup culture is hurting women, then why is it so popular? My intuitive answer to this is that college is kind of the time to experiment and to do things that you might not be able to do in high school or in a more restrictive environment like living with your parents. And it's a time to experiment before you reach the real world, the adult world, right? And I think that sexual experimentation is a big part of this, or can be a big part of this, so it doesn't surprise me that hookup culture would be most prevalent or most popular during this period of a young adult's life. And the next thing that comes to mind is the popularity of dating apps. So apps like Tinder, Bumble, and Grindr are the most popular in this category, and Tinder in particular has kind of been branded as the social media app for hooking up or the hookup app in the media and it really introduced this idea of micro dating and studies indicate that even though most people report using tinder for entertainment purposes rather than sexual or dating purposes males tend to believe more than females that tinder is intended for arranging hookup relationships and on top of that males tend to be less mate selective on these apps meaning that they're not as picky when it comes to choosing someone to swipe right on and they also have more of a casual sex motivation for using Tinder than women. And on top of that, I would also add that I think that this micro dating method might actually be adding to the self-esteem problem that we're seeing because people who are not conventionally attractive or even photogenic might be at a disadvantage when using these apps and aren't as strong contenders in the sexual competition that occurs on these apps, which could lead to feelings of inadequacy, particularly in men who accumulate matches much more slowly than women. Women tend to attract a large volume of male matches very quickly. And the next thing I want to point out is communication issues, which I think are certainly contributing to the discrepancy that we're seeing between males and females and their self-esteem as it relates to hookup culture. So I think that hookup relationships don't really seem like a great dynamic for people who want to be able to communicate openly and clearly about forming attachments and desiring a commitment from their sexual partner. Like I said in my background research, women tend to go into these relationships hoping that they'll come out of it with a boyfriend, and they tend to pursue committed relationships overall. So they're also afraid of being vulnerable, so they're af afraid of communicating things like, I love you, or I want to pursue a an exclusive relationship with you. And I think this is part of the problem because I think there's a big difference between hooking up in hopes that the other person is going to reciprocate your feelings and the attachment that you feel versus being involved in hookups because it makes you feel truly sexually liberated. And so if we look at hookup culture through the lens of the sexual revolution, hookup culture was really designed, if we can say that, to support casual relationships that do not result in committed relationships or even romantic feelings. And because hookup culture is so popular, Maybe women think that this is the default option for intimacy, and they're not really getting what they want out of these relationships, because if most women are pursuing committed relationships and are hoping that they'll go into a hookup relationship and come out of it with a boyfriend, I could see how it could be frustrating that they're not having committed relationships or that these, these relationships are not really designed to foster committed relationships. 
So I could see how this could be frustrating for a woman or how it might decrease her sense of self-worth if she values commitment, but no one is committing to her or that she feels like she's being reduced to her physical appearance or what she can offer sexually. And so some notes for future improvement. If I were to replicate the study, I would control for pre-existing conditions. I didn't control for things like anxiety or depression or other factors that might negatively influence self-esteem. And I would also be interested in looking at different communication styles in the context of these hookup relationships. And I'd be interested to see how better or how better communication styles might yield better outcomes or if this is just a matter of People who don't feel fulfilled by hookup relationships simply just shouldn't be in them or communicate from the very start that their intention is to find a long-term or committed exclusive partner. And the last thing is a limited sample size. Most of the participants in my study were heterosexual cisgender women and I had very few males participate in my study. And so I'd be interested in seeing a more balanced sex sample of course and i'd also be interested in looking at lgbtq plus experiences there have been studies that suggest that there's a difference between the way that heterosexual people communicate on apps like tinder versus how homosexual males communicate on apps like grinder and people who use tinder heterosexual people in particular tend to have a more friendly and in-depth conversation approach to micro dating whereas homosexual males on tinder tend to be more wary of forming emotional bonds with the people that they're micro dating on these apps and so they have a much more standoffish approach and they communicate in very short sentences and that also connects to the the difference in commu- communication styles and whether or not that yields more satisfying outcomes or an improvement of self-esteem So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your interest and attention, and I'm looking forward to having an in-depth discussion about this. Thank you.